5G. You know, the first time I ever heard that term was about 10 years ago. And if you remember 10 years ago, we were all quite busy with exploring the new 4G technology. But long story short, I got the chance to write an article and I concluded that the 5G networks would be intelligent networks that would connect the world without boundaries. A technology that would incorporate both men and machine in the same network. A seamless network where we can move from indoors to outdoors without losing coverage. Where we could house different kind of technologies, cellular technologies and wired technologies and other wireless technologies, all in one standard called 5G. And I think it's really cool to see that this is what the 5G networks are now becoming. So there are a lot of expectations on the 5G standard. We're expecting to have a really fast internet connection almost wherever we are. We're expecting a network where we can remote control cars, where we can do surgery remotely just using the 5G network. And we're also in the need of a network for the sensors, the massive machine type communication network, where we can have up to a million sensors per square kilometers. All these sensors should be low power, should be low cost devices that we can deploy almost anywhere we have 5G coverage. So how do we incorporate all these wishes in one standard? Well, the 5G standard consists of three cornerstones. So we have the massive machine type communication, which is a massive IoT corner. We have the extreme mobile broadband and we have the ultra reliable low latency communication all in one standard sort of a standard that fits everyone's need and it is in the massive machine type communication or the massive IoT corner where LoRaWAN and 5G will meet up and this is sort of an ongoing tug of war between two different technologies and I found this good quote online, which I think really sums it up in a very good way. So it is from a guy called Art Reed, and he said that many people compare LoRa and NB-IoT technologies as if they were battling out for dominance in the IoT market. In reality, they are two branches in an emerging LPVAN ecosystem. A guy that I know who works for an operator, he said that I believe that without LoRaWAN, there wouldn't be any NB-IoT. He feels very strongly that these standards are taking advantage of each other, so that if one standard is evolving, then the other one can follow and then take the lead and then take back the lead, so to say. So with just one standard, it wouldn't be this good competition between the different standards. I wanted to come to this event prepared, prepared to talk about 5G, prepared to talk about LoRaWAN and how these two standards coexist. So during my research, I, I wanted to read more because I, I really felt that I needed to get more knowledge in, in this area. So one of the first pages I looked at on the internet was the LoRa Alliance homepage. And I found a document there comparing LoRaWAN and 5G. So I thought to myself, well, this research may be very easy for me. I can just read this document and I will be prepared to talk to you guys. Unfortunately, that wasn't really the case. I cannot share this infographic from the LoRa Alliance, unfortunately, because it didn't allow me. I'm not a member, so I cannot share it. But let's quote some of the things that I found in the document. When I started to read, well, the first sentence is, of course, that LoRaWAN is the best choice for massive IoT. Um, given that LoRa Alliance is the one who put the document out, I understand why they wrote that. But when you start reading about battery life, 
you see that LoRaWAN has a superior battery life with 10 to 15 years proven battery time. And uh, when you look at the comparison with the 5G standards, it doesn't really say how long the battery life is. It just says that, well, it's, it's not good. That's, that's how I understand it, at least. And I wanted to compare the same thing, so I thought, well, there must be some more science behind all this. So I started to dig into a lot of different reports. I read reports, white papers, and online blog posts and whatnot to come up with a conclusion. And when I started looking at these technologies, the striking thing was how similar they are in many cases. So if I, for example, look at these two things, I don't get the impression that these are similar at all. But when I look at research, like this one from the Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, the conclusion must be that the battery life could be sort of the same. And the answer is that it really depends. It depends on, in this case, what is the package size? Is it a large or small package? Is it close or is it far to the base station? So if you look at LoRaWAN, it could be better or it could be worse than 5G. It depends on the use case. And then the other thing that people are battling on the internet is the range. So I found several reports about the range of LoRaWAN versus 5G. This one is from University in Lund, which is also a Swedish university. But there are other reports confirming approximately the same thing. They concluded that the range of LoRaWAN versus the 5G standards, uh, it's sort of the similar thing. In this case, the CATM1 standard is of the 4G version and the 5G version has slightly better overall performance, so it will be similar to narrowband IoT. But when you look at the range, they are quite similar technologies. The range will depend on the frequency and those are almost the same. It will depend on the modulation. It will depend on the antennas, the transmitting antennas, receiving antennas, and whatever happens in the air in between. So in theory, they are quite the same. In this case, the LoRa transmitter has a s slightly less output power. And that is why we see this difference. So outage probability then, what is that? Well, it's the probability that we can send a package to a receiver which is placed indoors. So I found another report from a Danish university and they did a coverage comparison between LoRaWAN and some other standards. And their conclusion was that um, they are sort of the same. And again, I feel that the slightly higher outage probability of LoRaWAN is because that it will use a slightly less output power, meaning that the overall performance of the network will be slightly lower. But in reality, I think they are quite similar. So, I don't think that it's any magic behind this. I think that it's just the fact that these standards are sort of trying to do the same thing. And when it comes to battery life, there are other factors that you have to take into consideration. What is the processor that this device uses? What kind of sensors is attached to it? How much will it upload and when? Can it store data in the device's buffer and send some occasional times during a week? Or does it have to transmit data more often. So it all depends on your use case. But clearly there must be some differences, right? 
I cannot have done this comparison and read all these thousand pages without having something to show you. Something to say is a difference. Well, so I put together this infographic for you. I feel that when it comes to democratization, I feel that LoRaWAN has a slightly better edge than, than 5G. The reason is that with LoRaWAN you can build networks wherever you want to build them. The cost of building such a network is lower than building a similar 5G network if you do it all by yourselves. However, if you want a cheap solution to start with, 5G offers you a SIM card that for one euro per month will give you access to an already existing infrastructure. And when it comes to the number of devices, well, LoRaWAN has more devices, it has been around longer, it has had a better start on the market. There are more devices of LoRaWAN than on 5G. And when it comes to security, I feel that 5G has a slightly better edge. It has better encryption, it has the SIM card that holds some user credentials, and overall, it's easier to update the device using firmware over the air updates, which is a very significant part of keeping your solution secure. And these three points that I'm showing you right now, they're sort of, they are linked together. So with the LoRaWAN, you have a limited payload, which means that you cannot send data as much as you want. Whereas with 5G, you don't have that constraint. The only downside with 5G is that if you send a lot, you will sort of lose the battery life. But that's the same with both standards, as I showed you earlier. And firmware over the air with a 5G solution is less complex than with LoRaWAN. Finally, and I know that you feel that you are having a good solution to manage this unlicensed band in LoRaWAN. But the fact is that LoRaWAN uses unlicensed spectrum and 5G uses licensed spectrum. So in that case, I have to say that the 5G solution is more protected when it turns to signal integrity during the transmission and reception because the spectrum is controlled. On the other side, it's easier to build a private, or I would say private as it is a free frequency, but a private or an isolated network in a factory, for example, with LoRaWAN, because you don't have to apply for the spectrum and pay the fee for the spectrum. But again, with 5G, it's also possible to build a private network. However, you have to pay for the license. But the upside is that you get a more private, private network as you have your own frequency band. So the conclusion is that IoT, I, I don't think it's a matter of technology. I think it's more a matter of digital transformation. And that is what we should focus on, not trying to battling out which technology is the superior to the other. I'll share a few news when it comes to 5G before I finish this session. And one of the cool news is the 5G NR+. 5G NR+, is a European developed standard and it doesn't use any base stations. So it's sort of a mesh technology where you jump from one transmitter to the other transmitter and so on until you s end up in a gateway somewhere. And this is using the DECT spectrum, you know, the ones that we use for the, the old handheld phones that we had at home or at the office and so on. So it's a really cool use case and it's uh, totally different than the other 5G things that we have come to know through years. And um, there's also narrowband IoT version 2 coming out with faster speeds, better positioning using the 5G technology, also better battery life because you can now decrease the output power down to 14 dBm which is similar to LoRaWAN. So, here again, things are leveling out as we develop things further and further. And it also has the roaming 
capabilities that narrowband IoT version 1 didn't have. The last third important news is the NU SIM. The new SIM where you don't have to have this kind of physical SIM like the one I have behind me, but you'd rather have a very, very small component in your device that is embedded in the modem already where you store all the data. So you can update with operator features after you have produced the unit. One final thing before we end this session. I would like to ask for your help. And I would like to ask you to help me to break the world record. And I'm not talking about the 30 trillion devices that we are going to put out on the market. I would like to ask you to help me with one thing. All these devices that we are selling to the market, putting out there, we must make sure that they really do something to push humanity forward. There is a climate crisis going on and putting more stuff on the market that doesn't make sense, doesn't perform, doesn't operate, doesn't make any sense. Even though the connected hairbrush is very cool because it tells you what kind of shampoo to use the next day, from a climate perspective, I think it's totally worthless. So let's work together to break the world record in the number of meaningful devices we put out on the market. Thank you for listening.